recognize Senator Blackburn via WebEx. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Call, thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for your time this past week to uh, discuss some of these issues. Um, there's been discussion about your inflammatory rhetoric and the claims that you have made on Twitter. And I think you realize that this is of concern to many of us on the committee because your language is really not representative of the way a top policy official at the Pentagon should write about policy. And whether it's for a domestic or an international audience. So this is something that you have put out there, uh, regardless of tone. What is interesting to me, as I have gone back and read some of your predictions, is how wrong and off base you were on these predictions. And you've talked about being there in policy and the ability to participate in the interagency discussion. So I want to just ask you some yes and no questions for the record. Do you still believe that sanctions relief to Tehran will go toward domestic investment and not support terrorism? I don't know what the current intelligence assessments uh, suggest. Okay. My previous I statements were based on, yes no. yeah, I, don't know, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know okay. the current assessment. Okay. Do you still believe that Al Qaeda is a bigger threat to Washington than Moscow? That Al Qaeda is a bigger threat to Washington than Moscow? Yeah, which is something that you had tweeted out on April 23rd of 2012. I think that Al Qaeda remains a, a significant threat to the United States. You claimed several times that Trump administration responses to Iranian aggression would lead directly to war, did they? I think that they were part of a cycle of provocation on both sides that brought us very okay. close to war on at least two occasions. And you know they did not. You made a similar prediction about the likeliness of a massive war using your word, on the Korean Peninsula. Did that happen? Uh, it did not. You claimed that the U.S. strike on Soleimani would get the U.S., your words, kicked out of Iraq. Did it? The Iraqi parliament voted to uh, get rid of U.S. forces, but our forces are still there. Yes. You claimed that relocation of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem which is a bill I had when I was in the House for a few years, bipartisan, by the way, would lead to a, um, a to to our provocations there. Did that happen? Uh, I think it worsened relations with the Palestinians, but it did not worsen relationships with other uh, Arab states. Okay, let me move on. Strategic patience. We talked about this. What does that mean to you? I think it probably means different things to different people. I'm not a subscriber of strategic patience. I think that the issues that we've talked about in the hearing today, and there are many others, are urgent uh, uh, issues that need to be tackled uh, Would immediately. Would you say that I, it applies to North Korea? I think that North Korea's to China? growth. So, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator. It's some, there's a little bit of a lag in the technology. Uh, I believe that the North Korean threat is increasing, both its nuclear and its long-range intercontinental ballistic missile uh, threat to the United States. It is an issue that needs to be addressed urgently. Uh, it's also an issue that's built up over decades, so it's not likely to be solved overnight. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we should sit, our, sit on our hands and not do anything about it. Okay, uh, let's talk about Pacific deterrence. Um, current top Pentagon leadership has identified China as the pacing challenge for the department. If confirmed, how would you work with the combatant commands to balance the long-term vision of policy against the resources that the commanders need right now? I think China is an example of where uh, we don't have the luxury of choosing between doing things now and also planning for the long term. We have to do both uh, because uh, China poses uh, a, a clear and immediate challenge to U.S. interests and allies in the Indo-Pacific. So we have to make sure that right now 
our forces are ready and lethal, that they are as distributed and resilient as possible, that we are as integrated with our allies and partners as possible, but we also need to be making the investments as a nation and as a department in the types of capabilities down the line that will determine who wins the competition for the 21st century. That means artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and other uh, cutting-edge uh, technology. So this is an area where we have to do both. Okay, I have a couple of questions that I will submit for QFRs. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Piper. And let me recognize Senator